I can't believe nobody's actually done this before. Like, I'm sorry, book two, but you need to do better. Hi, I'm Josh, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing the Golden Girls book tag. And to my surprise, I couldn't find this tag anywhere online or on YouTube. So I'm assuming no one's done it before. And I decided to make my own. This will be my second or third book tag ever. But I figured it'd be really fun to do it because if there's one thing I love in life, it's Golden Girls. The only thing I love more than Golden Girls is probably Buffy. And even then, they might be a bit of a tie. But in any case, let's get going. Okay, the first tag is Blanche, a book exploring sexuality. Now this can be anything from LGBTQ to BDSM to just standard sexuality or even asexuality. It all applies here. And for this one, I decided to go with a little bit of a twist of a pick. And that's going to be Fledgling by Octavia Butler. Now, I feel like there are a lot of obvious choices for this one, and I wanted to choose this one because I feel like it does a really good job exploring sexuality and relationships in general. This book is a, basically a vampire narrative, and I was actually hesitant to pick it up because of that. One thing I've learned about Octavia Butler is that she has a way of circumventing expectations, of making old cliches new. And she really does that really well in here. And in this book, we have this dynamic between vampires and their victims, who, where they become, well, they become much more of a shared partner in this situation. And there's a big exploration in this idea of monogamy versus polygamy, and the idea of loving someone, but also the idea of consent. Now, I know this isn't strictly sexuality, but I feel like exploring relationships in general still applies here. And this is very much in the realm of exploring different types of relationships, and again, exploring consent. And this book was published in the early 2000s, I think, and I think it was really ahead of its time in having this conversation about what it really means to be con consenting, especially when you're someone like these vampires who are essentially in a in a position of power for reasons that become apparent in the book. I highly recommend this book to anyone who likes Octavia Butler, who likes horror, and likes a twist on classic urban fantasy. Absolutely love this. The next tag is Rose, a book that reminds you of where you grew up. And for this one, I chose Fried Green Tomatoes by Fanny Flagg. And I've only read this once, and I've actually been thinking about rereading it for the longest time, because I don't remember a lot about it. I know it's set in Alabama. I'm from Georgia. And it's about this set of people, I think particularly these two women, who fall for each other. I honestly don't remember much about it. I just remember being reminded a lot of home. When I think of home and the books that I've read, this is probably one of the biggest ones that I'll think of, just because it's Southern lifestyle. Even if it is a little bit before my time, it might be 90s, I'm not sure. But I know the movie, I really enjoyed it, Kathy Bates and someone else. But it's a book that I kind of want to reread. Definitely applies to you when I think about my home as a Georgian. The next tag is Dorothy, a book that made you feel smarter. And for this one, I'm going to go with Demon Haunted World, A Science is a Candle in the Dark by Carl Sagan. I absolutely recommend this book to literally everyone. This is a book that is basically the basic tenets of skepticism in science, or science-based skepticism, where it's basically exploring skeptical thought and how to approach the word skeptically, and then it also tackles very common pseudosciences and alternative medicines are basically a bunch of bunk material. And there were a lot of books around these days that explore this. But this really is the foundation to a lot of the skeptical movement is this book by Carl Sagan. And if you're ever curious about how to tell the difference between bad science and, and science that's worth believing in, this book is a good starting point on how you, how why is it that we don't believe in, that we shouldn't believe in UFOs, or why shouldn't we believe in ghosts, or anything like that? Or why isn't it that our personal experiences are enough in this situation? And this book does a really good job in exploring that, and it is a fantastic foundation for anyone curious about skepticism. And even if you're not, I feel like it's a necessary book because people need to have a better appreciation for how we have a habit of tricking ourselves. And this is a great foundation for that. The next tag is Sophia. Picture it. A book featuring a character giving their life story. And for this one, I chose to go with The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. This is, this is another book that I would consider sort of a unexpected pick because it isn't your classical let me tell you my life story type of book. This is obviously science fiction because this in this story he's telling his life 
or his 15 lives rather, and how they all build up this, this one narrative. And this narrative is told in a non-linear fashion. I think it's told fantastically. I feel like there are, again, are a lot of obvious choices for this one that I hope people will promote when they do this, but I wanted to go with this one because I feel like it's less expected. And it's not something you would think about when you think about someone telling the life story. But this is told from the perspective of Harry August as he tries to explain to us what it is that's happened in all of his life's times and what it is that it means for the significance of his life. Or lives, I suppose. The next one is Stanley, a book you love to hate. And for this one, it's obviously subjective on what you want to define as love to hate. Maybe you love it yet hate certain parts. Or maybe you just hate it so much and you love to talk about how much you hate it. This one, I'm going to go with they love parts and hate certain parts. And that's going to be with The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Diffinger. And I like this because it's a really well-told time travel story exploring this dynamic of these two lovers where one of them basically lives... I believe non-linearly, I'm not entirely sure. Either that or he lives backwards, something like that. And basically, they have to learn to have this relationship, this marriage, where one of them is living their life in a different way. So, the one each of them interact with the other at different points in their life, in their time span. Now, the reason I have so many problems with this book, the reason I would say it's something I hate, is because one. There's a lot of homophobia in this book, and it is not the type of homophobia that's being explored in a critical way. It's just casual, casually accepted homophobia by our main character from when he was 15, and he had two different versions of himself, basically ex looking at each other's bodies, and then their dad walks in, and he gets super defensive, explaining how he's not gay or anything like that. Basically, where he was a little too eager to say, don't worry, I'm not a fag or anything. And it wasn't really addressed well, and then later on in the book, we get to the point where some guy calls him gay or fag, and he goes ballistics and beats the guy to a bloody pulp. And it sort of just passed off as men do what they do. That's just sort of what you'd expect from a man when told that, and it's never explored. So you have these more than one time in the story where you have homophobia just being casually accepted by our main character, and it's something that is just made okay by the author, which I didn't like. Then there's this the whole basic problem with this fundamental premise of this story. The story's idea is you have this guy who falls in love with this woman and they learn to live together in a non-linear fashion. But for the woman, she's still living linearly and she still has a point where she met him first in her life and all those points that follow rather. And for her, she was I think five when they first met and he was maybe 40 at that time. While sure, they were adults when he first met her, the fact is she's known him since her childhood. And for me, it's a little too Woody Allen-ish to have this male figure who is essentially a power figure in her life in her early years and to the point where she becomes enamored with him and eventually they, they fall in love and blah blah blah. Of course, that's not before a 40-year-old man kisses a 15-year-old for the first time. and It's just... It's a little too... It's a little too inappropriate for me. And it's something that it's, I find it hard to overlook. It's also something that's not just really explored at all. She wanted this convenient, fun premise without really exploring the significance of it. I feel like I'm making this video now for the purpose of shit-talking that book. But you know what? We love this shit-talk, don't we? That's why we love Stanley. The next one's going to be Cheesecake, a book that you love to consume over and over and over again. And that, for me, is going to be 112263 by Stephen King. I've read this book four, maybe five times, maybe more, I don't know. It's the audiobook that I can just put on the background and consume. It is so long, yet it's such an amazing story. And I can just dive into it at any point and just fall in love with it. I love time travel. I also love the fact that there's just a romance inside of it that I can really connect to. They, they just pull The characters pull you in so strongly that it's hard not to love it. So this is a book that I've just read over and over again. So for me, this is my this is my cheesecake book. Or one of them. I like a few flavors of cheesecake. The next book is Golden, a book exploring aging in the golden years. And for this one, I chose to go with Choosies with Maury, an old man, a young man, and life's greatest lesson by Mitch Alpham. Now I read this book probably 10 years or more ago in high school. And at the time, I really loved it. I haven't read any more Mitch Alpham because he's the type of writer who writes a lot of Christian fiction or Christian nonfiction. It's not something I'm into. I don't remember this book being Christian slanted. I am interested in rereading this because I remember it being a really, a really poetic 
narrative of basically a dying old man, and I remember loving it for that reason. It's a question of whether or not this is how I remember it. It's been so long since I've read it, but I just remember having, having a very fond feelings for this book and connecting to it in a way that I don't often do. And the last one's going to be Thank You for Being a Friend, a book featuring a strong friend group. And for this one, I'm going with another Stephen King, and that is it. And if you don't know what this is about, basically a killer clown comes to a town every 72 or 27 years? I don't remember. Something like that. No, every 27 years, that's definitely maybe it. And basically wants to eat children. Ultimately, it becomes this battle between these kids who eventually become adults to try and battle and take down this monster. And this is just a perfect example of a very strong friend group who stick together and it's all about their bond. And in some places a little too much about their bond. But it's still a book that I absolutely adore. And if you want strong friend groups, Stephen King is your guy. I mean, Stand By Me, for example, another one of his. A bunch of amazing options there. Lastly, what better way to end a Golden Girls book tag than by tagging one of your YouTube friends. And I will say that I'm still new on BookTube, so I don't really have any BookTube friends just yet, but I'm still going to be tagging Andy Nicole, a small BookTuber who I just love watching, and we both follow each other on Instagram. So I'm going to count that here. Absolutely check her out. She is fantastic. I hope you all enjoy the book tag, and I hope you consider doing it too. I'm still amazed that it hasn't been done before. I can't be the only person who loves the Golden Girls. So with that, thank you for watching. If you like my video, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of my picks in the comments. And most of all, thank you for being a friend and have an amazing day.